Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Mike with Tradewinds RV Center here to congratulate you on your purchase of your No Boundaries 19.5 travel trailer. I'm here to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things, enjoy your, uh, get a better use out of it for your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A couple things I want you to take into consideration before unhooking. I want you to think about where your water and electricity hookups are. Your water is going to be toward the front on your off camp side or your driver's side of your vehicle. And then your power is gonna be all the way at the, at the rear. I also want you to think about this slide. Make sure there's gonna be no obstacles heeding the slide from coming in or out or touching it while you guys are camping. You wanna make that completely free. Also wanna park on as level of ground as possible. Once you've got your unit parked, our hitch man is going to go over showing you how to do your hitch work. First thing you're going to do is make your unit level. Our unit does come with a power tongue jack with a docking light should you need it in the evening. And simply up or down. Take that and raise or lower your unit. Now I recommend putting a little level in the middle of the side of your unit on your off camp side if you don't like the look of it. But it's so tiny it doesn't matter much. But you can pick one of those up in our store and make sure your unit is level. Now, should you lose power to this power tongue jack, up underneath this little rubber gasket is a manual override. And you have this crank handle to put on there. Simply raise or lower. Now, speaking of power, I like to check my terminals when I arrive at the campsite. Make sure everything is stayed on from being bouncing down the road. We've got our unit stable, or excuse me, level. Next thing we're gonna do is stabilize it. Now you have stabilizing jacks in all four corners of your unit, and you have this hand crank. Now this is a three quarter inch socket on here. I recommend uh, getting a drill gun or a impact driver to run this down in just a matter of seconds. So you want to bring these down just until they are taunt. So, so hand crank these down or use your impact driver just until they come down in contact with whatever you have on the ground. I do recommend jack pads. Jack pads are going to protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt, debris, hot tar, hot black top. Put them down and then just bring your jack pad, stabilizing pad down until it's just taut on top of it. So bring down all four of those in all four corners. Once you have, go back and check and make sure you haven't raised or lowered any of them. Remember, just until it's taut, you don't want to raise or lower the unit. These are stabilizing jacks, not leveling jacks. So once we've got all those down, We've got our unit level, we've got it stable. Let's hook up our water and electricity. Come around to your off camp side, go into the rear of the unit. Your storage, you have your power cord. New Fury Amp power cord system. 30 amp outlet here. So these are turning lot. Well, this one isn't. This is actually just a straight Fury on. So once that's in, Twist your gray locker back here. 
and you've got 30 amp service. Now, should you be going somewhere that you need to plug into 110? In your convenience pack is this 30 amp to 110 amperage reducer. Simply attach that to your 30 amp, plug into any 110. You'll be able to use that anywhere you go. Got our power hooked up. Let's hook up our water. Coming to the front of your unit, you have both water connections, your city water and your potable water. Let's start with your city water connect. Very first thing we are going to do is hook up to the hose a water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure down to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. You want to use this every time you use it because a lot of trailers or lines are set at about 60 max. So always use this water pressure regulator. Plug it in here, hook up your hose, and before turning on your water, we're going to find your hot water heater. Coming over to your campsite of the unit is access door to your water heater. All we're going to want to get in here for is to put in our drain plug. They have left it out from the last time we were camping and draining our hot water heater. Put in your drain plug, put that in nice and taut. Once you have that in, then you can turn on your water. So once your water has ran for a few minutes, you come up here. Pull on this water pressure on this pressure release valve. That's gonna let air out of the lines. And then once water starts flowing steadily out of here when you pull on it, then you know that your hot water heater is full enough to start. You'll start that from the indoors. There is a switch on the outside, an on-off switch for this hot water heater. This is the switch you'll use when hooked up to 110. And the other hookup, 30 amp use your starter indoors but 110 start it from here so let's say we're going camping and we're not going to have city water we're going to be out dry docking so that's when we'll use our fresh water connection or potable water again fill this up burp your hot water heater like we did letting the water out of the uh, pressure valve or the air out of the pressure valve and then you can turn on your hot water heater from indoors. Now, using city water or potable water is when you turn on your water pump. That's also indoors. Don't turn on your water pump when hooked up to city water, it's unnecessary. Got our water hooked up, our electricity hooked up. We can go inside and deploy this slide. But before going in, I'm gonna walk you around the unit and show you a few other things on the outside. Do you have your front storage with this great magnet to hold it up? Your fresh and city water connect. This is your fresh water drain that you drain when leaving the campsite. Come around to the back of the unit. This is your sewage outlet where you hook up your dump, and there's your gallon water tank dumps that we'll dump later. On the back of your unit, you also have a little outdoor shower, a black tank flush that we'll use when dumping our tanks, and cable and satellite hookup. Come around the back of the unit. You do have a ladder to access your roof. Go up there and check your seams. I recommend getting a cover for your spare tire. Keep it from dry rotting on you. This black piece here is the access to the back of your fridge. Come around to the front, you have a porch light. A couple of 110s out here. You also have a uh, real a vent for your microwave. Down here is a furnace heat release. If you have your furnace running, steer clear of that because it'll get rather warm. You get your hot water heater. Below here, a LP quick connect for grill outdoors and the rest of your indoor storage. We talked about your battery. Here is where you turn on your propane. covers everything on the outside let's go on the inside let's talk about these little steps first they're wet so I don't want to run them all the way in at the moment I like to shake them off shake dirt off them when I'm doing the, when I'm storing it away but it'll store pull that handle and lock it in bring it back down 
adjustable feet here with this cotter pin. These will go up and down. Coming inside your unit, directly to your right. Make sure that everyone knows where your fire extinguisher is. It's always gonna be at your entry doorway. To the left of your entry doorway, on the floor here, is an access panel. It's an access panel to your fuse box and breaker box. So if you've got a seven and a half, 15s, 30, 40, you got a variety here. So I highly recommend grabbing a handful of those from our store to have with you when you go camping. Coming back over here above the fire extinguisher. This is our Wi-Fi boost. This is a couple of uh, USB ports and a 110. Coming all the way up top here. Let's turn on our interior lighting. That's much better. Here's our porch light. LED for underneath the awning. Slide one and out. And awning in and out. Now it's kind of raining right now, so I don't want to pull this out all the way. But, well, you know what? It actually stopped for a minute. So I'm going to show you what to do on your awning here. When you run this awning out, it's all power. It'll run out rather quickly. You only want to run it out until that flap falls down to 90 degrees. Then you know you're at, you're at your extension. Simply return it back up. And there's your lighting. Underneath that, you got a couple spots to hang your keys, bottle opener. Let's come into your unit now. On your stove. This is a lighter light. You would just Turn it to light, gas will be coming out. Light it up with your own lighter. Self-explanatory microwave. That's really cool on this unit. You have this vacuum system. Turn it on, hook up the vacuum, open this up, and when this is plugged in, it won't run off battery. It's gotta be plugged in. Um, we can vacuum the unit out. Really nice, keeps it nice and clean in here. And you can actually, Sweep everything right into this. Your table will fold down into a bed there as well. Let's talk about your thermostat. This will handle your fan, your air conditioning, and your heat. Simply set it at the desired temperature. Close this front door so you can hear a little better here. Let's go into your Dometic fridge. In the top of your freezer is your controls. Here's where you turn it on. Auto means when you're plugged in, you're running off electricity. As soon as you unplug, it automatically goes to gas. Or simply lift that and you're on gas all the time. Recommend turning this on, plugging it in, turn it on for a couple hours before you head down the road. Do you have some safety last here to keep it cracked without getting a mold in it while you're heading, while you're starting? In your bathroom, there's some more controls. Here's where you turn on your water heater. Here's where you turn on your water pump. Battery check, check all your tanks here. Over here, heated holding tank system. Your fresh water, your gray water, and black water all have heating pads on them. If you're in inclement weather, turn them on, keep your waters from freezing on you. In the ceiling here, you do have a hand crank open, hand touch, fan. One ten under here. Keep an eye on your plumbing in your bathroom, just like you would your your home. Keep an eye on that, as well as back behind your toilet here. Out of the bathroom. Underneath the thermostat, all the way down on the floor here, is your twelve volt carbon monoxide detector. Now the reason I mention this 12 volt is because it's constantly running off your battery. 
So if you're going to be gone for the day and you're not plugged in, disconnect your battery to keep this from running your battery down. Emergency escape windows. On your bed, you do have one touch lighting all the way throughout the unit. I also mentioned that this piece here is for your to go on top of your table when it folds down there to make your bedding. Here's your television all strapped in. I'm going to unstrap and move this to the side so I can show you something on your TV cable here. So where your cable goes in, you got a little button. When you arrive at the campsite and you're all plugged in and all set up and getting ready to scan the channels, hit that button and then scan your channels. That's actually a digital channel enhancer. So you'll pick up 20 to 30 channels with that thing. Strap in, strap in for the ride. Oh, Bubby Stove, you also have a light and fan. All right, we'll turn the air conditioning on here real quick just for you to hear it run. Oh, it's not going too off battery. I'm sorry about that. It about covers everything on the inside. Let's go take a look on the outside, act like we're leaving the campsite. Alright, so as we leave, let me, sh let me shut your awning light off out here. So we store this door. Again, I like to lift it up, shake it off. I'm not going to fold it in right there, it's kind of wet. Fold it in and lock that. After you close your door, lift and bring over this piece and deadbolt your door. This is really important. You don't need this door swinging open on you going down the road. Don't just lock it, deadbolt it. Now we're going to come to the front of our tires here and we're going to empty both of those low point drains. We're then going to come to our hot water heater and again pull our drain in there and drain your hot water tank. One more drain. One more drain over here underneath your water connections. That low point drain. You do all that at your campsite, it's all clean water. We've got our drains dumped. Now we're gonna bring our sewage hose that comes in your convenience pack back here and hook up our sewage. At that point you're gonna pull your black tank. Wastewater, galley. Wastewater is your black tank, that's your right handle, your black handle. After you pull that handle, sounds like it's done draining, we're gonna hook up our water pressure regulator again and go to this black tank flush. We're gonna run that black tank flush with a hose for about five minutes. Clean out your black tank really good. Unhook your water, close your black, make sure you leave that open while you're running your, your flush. And then open up your galley. Your galley tank is going to be your cleaner waters. It's going to clean out your hose and make things a little easier to handle on that. And we are all done. Again, we thank you for choosing trade winds. Hope you enjoy this trailer for many years to come. Happy camping.